Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this evening for digital impressions. We have Dr. Anderson from Capital Dentistry and Jamie Sullivan from Henry Schein. We will be sharing the presentation with it, starting with Henry Schein in their presentation for our digital aspects, and it will move to uh, Dr. Anderson showing you how to work it in-house. Next screen. And then we'll have a small little talk about Shaw Lab Group and how we can be your digital choice. You need to turn the page. First, I'm going to introduce Jamie. We're just having troubles turning the pages here. And uh, so again, Henry Schein, Dr. Anderson, and Shaw Lab. And we'll start with Jamie from Henry Schein. Next page. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, John. I appreciate the, the introduction. I'm uh, excited to be here today and, uh, and share some information, um, obviously, to uh, enlighten on the digital workflow and just where it's at today. It's been very, very, very busy in terms of uh, the knowledge and the implementation within digital technology here at Henry Schein. Uh, I am the digital specialist within Toronto in the GTA region. I've been doing so for about six and a half years, uh, around 12 years in dental in, in total. And in my role, I look after the training, support, and sales for our digital CAD CAM solutions and technology. Uh, I work together with the clinics and also with the laboratories to ensure that connection of the digital workflow from start to finish, uh, from scan to final restoration. So I, I enjoy doing, doing that, and uh, I'm happy to be here today. So thank you. And we'll just move along here to a couple of the... Uh, the slides that we've got today just to show you what I mean by our connect dental workflow. <clears throat> and that is the connection from, like I said, the clinic uh, to the laboratory. And we do so uh, with the goal of enhancing the patient experience, which is foremost, delivering predictable quality dentistry and improving efficiencies and productivity. Uh, so as mentioned at Henry Shine is a full service uh, provider uh, solutions for open architecture uh, that include practice management operability, uh, it connects to our partner labs, such as Shaw, who's done uh, unbelievable work within their digital aspect, and then provided education, education and support ongoing for our clients. That's really what we plan to do at Henry Schein Connect Dental and, and what our, our mission is. Okay. So if we move along here, um, what I really want to focus in on is some features today uh, of, of what digital solutions can do and, and why those are going digital. Uh, and really what it's done is brought our team, which used to be only a few of us, up to uh, 11 across the country. So really it's, it's grown substantially because of that digital workflow. Uh, Bill Dow is our director of equipment technology and prosthetic solutions. And we've got a, a group of uh, very qualified CAM specialists all the way from BC uh, to the Maritimes. So just have a look there and, and you know, depending on where you're coming in from, uh, this would be your specialist, okay? So if you want to take a quick picture of that, I'll also have contact information later. You can reach out to me and we can make sure you get in contact with your local representation. Okay, so we'll move along here. Um, what, what are the applications? So what are people using digital scanners for today? Um, there's quite a few uh, indications that are, are capable now that maybe weren't maybe five years ago. Uh, from scanning implants, crown and bridge, study models, uh, even full dentures we're seeing now, surgical guides, uh, the implant workflow is, is very uh, prevalent. And, and as Dr. Anderson will, will show you later on, uh, I've got a little video here that shows, um, hey, how hard is it to scan? What about the different materials? I knew there was issues and you needed powder. And what about zirconia and, and metal? If you can notice here, this is a, a live scan um, over all dental materials, uh, even chromium cobalt, uh, the shining that's coming off there, no powder, zirconia, metal, uh, you name it, uh, soft tissue. So all those, um, I guess, maybe areas where you know, the digital workflow was, hey, can, can it do it? The answer is yes. And um, there's not really anything it can't do now. So that is, that is important to know. And it is something that, uh, you know, for a lot is, is shocking. They didn't realize just how far and, and the capabilities you can do. Uh, so as we, uh, as we move along here, um, just show that, that slide one more time, that scan, just to show the, the power. But have a look at this. I mean, we're showing a, a fully indentulous area. We're showing the scan of a, of a golf ball, um, all on four, all on sixes. Um, you know, you're seeing, uh, you know, wires for braces. So 
the scans are, are truly capable of just about anything right now with the, uh, the artificial intelligence and the power of the, of the scanners. So that is, that is kind of the, the key and why it's so popular now. Okay, as we move along here. Uh, what, is, what about the wow factor? Why, why are we getting a scanner in terms of, hey, I can take an impression, so, so why move to a scanner? Well, it also comes down to um, what the patient receives in terms of uh, you know, their, um, their experience when, when doing a digital impression versus a traditional impression. So if we uh, click here, um, we'll move along to the next slide. It shows a couple of the pieces that make for a pleasant experience. Um, things like treatment simulation. Now, you can actually take a scan and overlay that scan you know, six, nine, 12, two years later, and actually show the patient, hey, this is what we're seeing. If you can see on that little uh, image over here um, with the, uh, the red and the green, it's showing actually the changes. And in that red and green map, is corresponding to where, right, or change. So you can actually really pinpoint that for the patient. I'll show you a little bit more on that later. Um, but you know, uh, doing an ortho treatment simulator, you can scan the before and show them what they could look like later. Um, digital smile design, virtual articulation, gait analysis, um, prep analysis, just to ensure you know, you know there's no undercuts. Uh, you have proper reduction. Uh, it helps you with maybe select material if you know you can only get maybe uh, a millimeter reduction, right? So things like that that you can see right away now is creating for a better experience and better records, I would argue, when you have that digital patient. Once you've got that scan, you've got the capacity to then move forward, whether it's a digital model, like I said, whether it's bringing into like a smile design software, uh, showing the patient there, keeping that record on file. Okay, so those are some of the powers of, of what the digital scanner can do now, okay? Well, that is it. Just click forward there, please. Okay. So this is a question I get asked, asked a lot as, the, as a specialist, right? We, we carry a couple of different options out there and a couple of different um, solutions, I should say. Um, so, so what's the process when you're, when you're looking at, you know, a, a digital scanner? Because there's some options. Uh, what features and benefits are important? And what brings value to you and your practice? Uh, hey, what's the learning curve? And, and I think we can hear from, from Dr. Anderson, who uh, when he picked up you know, his, his treehouse, it, it didn't take him very long to, uh, uh, to start doing um, you know, scans for every indication, full arch included. So uh, will the scanner improve over time? You know, the, the scanners obviously with their technology can improve over time. And, and we want that to happen because it's a piece that you will be using for more than a year, two years, three years, four years. So will it increase in, in its uh, capacity to grow with you? What configurations are available? Maybe you like a laptop version, maybe you like a cart version, maybe you like to integrate it with your computers. Uh, what software add-ons can you do? Like I talked about a couple options. Uh, that's important for digital workflows. Uh, will it connect to other technologies that come around later? Is it an open system? And we'll talk about that a little further. And then, you know, your total cost, what's the benefits and the outlay in terms of, uh, of the, the total picture? And where does my support come from? How is this managed, right? Because that's, that's an important piece. And, and at Henry Schein, we've got a, a layer of, of fully uh, qualified support under our Tech Central uh, group. So that's where, where we come involved. And then what options are there? Um, these are three of our very popular options. And, um, you know, feel free to reach out with questions on them. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, are a little different in terms of what they offer. So ask those questions and, and become educated on, on what the options are and how they fit into your practice best. Uh, I would argue there's not a one, one solution for everyone. Everyone's different and we need to understand that and as a consultant help with your, your decision in that, in that space. All right, so feel free to reach out to us there and look at different solutions. Uh, the TRIOS is one we, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about a little bit more today. And there are a couple different options with the TRIOS. Uh, you've got your basic version, your TRIOS 3, and now your TRIOS 4. Uh, again, some of the, the applications uh, change there. The hardware between the TRIOS basic and the TRIOS 3 are the same. Um, the TRIOS 4 just carries diagnostics now. And you can also get a cart version, um, which, which some people like as well, versus a laptop. So the configurations are there. So it's just about what works best for you. This, this little video I, I wanted to incorporate because it's a new feature talking about Will my scanner grow with me, and what else will it do? Uh, you know, other than just provide a uh, an impression. This actually took the dynamic motion. So we had the patient grind after taking the bite scan, 
and basically it picked up the, uh, uh, the, the dynamic motion of the patient. And we can actually send that over to Shaw and they'll see in that scan just exactly where that uh, you know, excursive uh, movement was happening. So it's a pretty powerful feature that they added onto the software as part of their promise to keep growing with, uh, with the technology and, and provide the user uh, updates consistently. I think that's a neat function that's new. Okay, if we move along. Um, smile design, it's incorporated into the three shape system. So this is a nice one to really educate the patient. Hey, what do you think if, you know, in terms of an aesthetic case, uh, let's put it on the screen. You let us know, do you want some more uh, oval shape? Do you want rectangle? There's some actual libraries there. You can, you can put on a, a smile from a celebrity or something along those lines, and you can actually get them discussing with you what they'd like to see. So as you send that off to, to Cha in your scan, uh, they'll receive that image as well, and they can use that to create a diagnostic wax up, right? So to create a wax up of that and, and uh, allow your patient to be involved in the discussion. That's a really neat feature that's involved uh, in the trios as well. The treatment simulator for ortho, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It's a before and after. It'll populate what you could look like with a clear aligner uh, solution. I think that's pretty explanatory itself. Okay. And then one I really like as well is the patient monitoring. So scanning the patient, like I said, um, you know, uh, six months, 12 months, a uh, year and a half, two years, and you can overlay all of those scans. It'll show in a video what changed, but it'll also give you a color map of, hey, you know, we've noticed some recession here. What, what, what do you think about, uh, or some grinding? What do you think about that night guard? Uh, you can actually show on the screen. So it gives a little bit more of a, uh, a visual to add to your discussion with your patient right there at their side. So if you, if you click ahead there, there should be a video that, that will um, uh, illustrate what we're talking about there. So if we move ahead here, so this is the little video. Okay, so, so you might not be able to detect that to the naked eye, but if you actually go into the software and it's overlaying all those scans from 2017, um, it'll pinpoint that area. You can get a number and you can actually show a measurement what's changed. So some neat functions now. It's not just an impression anymore. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's the patient monitoring. And then how do you send it? So a lot of questions become, well, how does, and John will talk about that later, but um, you know, sending it to your lab, it's through a communication portal, um, directly on the scanner, yeah, you, you pick draw, you hit send, and it goes directly to them in about four or five minutes. Instant communication with the lab, which is very important to have with that digital uh, workflow. Uh, you can have the communication right away, a real-time transfer to your lab. So that's the communicate portal that comes within the scanner. So that basically ties up you know, how you start with it, what you should consider, and how you, you know, talk to your patient, but also your lab and how it communicates together. So I'll just, uh, I'll end by saying our Ontario group is, is well facilitated here. We've got myself, uh, Julie Fry, who handles the London, Sarnia, and Windsor uh, region, and then Jennifer Frazier in the Ottawa, Kingston region. So take a picture of those, and for those out west or out east, uh, just you know, let us know. Uh, we can put you in contact with your representation as well um, from Henry Schein to discuss and see if we can show you those digital scanners. Thank you very much. And I'll pass it over to Dr. Anderson. Hey, everyone. So let's just see. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to build off what Jamie kind of went through and then take it through a real practice perspective of how we use it, how we use it every day, um, and kind of the time savings and the money savings of everything digital. So I'm at Capital at Young and Eglinton in Toronto, and um, we've been fully digital for about three years using the TRIOS version of the digital scanner. So I'm just going to take you through what we use it for every day. Um, so one thing is clear aligner, Invisalign or other, and really when you scan a patient in the office, it's to show them what's wrong, what can be better, and when they see it on a screen in front of their face, the acceptance rate is 10 times. So patient education is a main part of us using the scanner in our office every day. And this is just kind of a, one of our patients actually. So these are all real pictures, real scans from our own patients. And this is what they see on the model ahead of them. So anything small you can point out, they see it. They might push harder for Invisalign or more treatment when they see that. And uh, it's all digital completely to align if that's who you work with. So same day transmission, clean checks are back in about three or four days. 
and it just reduces all that transit time in the mail. So <clears throat> this is a big one for me. So we use a lot of implant planning, uh, tying our intraoral scans with CD, CT scans. You can do a lot of implant planning just from the office and even make your own uh, surgical guides. So one other thing for the patients is education again. So planning implants, maybe you need two, three, four implants. Maybe they don't think they need them, but once they see it on the screen that big, they're more likely to agree. So during crown and bridge work, which is a big chunk of the intraoral scanners work, uh, it just makes it a lot easier in terms of pinpointing what's going right, what's going wrong. You can shade select before and afters. So I often, <clears throat> I don't pick shades anymore. It's all based on the scanner. So it's actually never been wrong. It's, you know, bang on every single time. So this is the app that you can get to communicate with your lab. So I use it from the phone right here. So you can scan a patient and it shows up on your communicate portal and you can discuss cases through that. You can uh, check the status of cases. You can check the status at the lab of cases and you can show it to patients. So I often show the patients directly. This is what we're doing. So there's just a screen capture of the actual app that you would see on your phone. And this is considered, you know, this is one case for Diane. So we scanned her for two implants. And this is basically what I sent to the lab down here. So splinted crowns, 2627, light contacts, and then the implant specs. And then right above it, <clears throat> you can see same day. So Within a few hours, the lab has accepted the case and then they tell you this is the date you can expect it back. And then if you need to communicate from then on, you can do a little notes down here and you say, wait, I need to alter the shade or wait, we want lighter bite, that sort of stuff. So this is the main thing that we use the scanner for every day, you know, crown preps, bridge preps, crown and bridge, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do a few videos on how that actually goes, but these are the main steps. So you would scan the quadrant that you're working on, scan the opposing, scan the bite, and then you're done. In normal crown and bridge, you're gonna have to wait to take your final impression, right? So when you're using the intraoral scanner, you can scan everything before you've even prepped the tooth and then just go back and refine your scan here. So it saves a lot of time just in the prep work for a crown. Um, but Jamie mentioned a learning curve. So in the first week of using the scanner versus traditional impressions, I hated it. <laughs> um, you'd see scans like this over here. And it actually makes you criticize your work a lot more than if you just see an impression in front of your face. So you see all your margins or you don't see your margins or you see your bad margins, and it makes you go back and refine your work a lot more. So in nitpicking what you look for in scans, you always want like down here, this little scan here. If you can't see it, the scanner won't be able to see it either. So you gotta be able to see your margins. So right here, we're pretty good. But if you flip it over and look on the other side, the margin sort of disappears here. So that's a spot where you'd go back and work on it a little bit. And I'll show you in the video what that means. So there's just another view of kind of what can you do? What can you do better? Um, this scan right here, the margin is clearly visible everywhere, but this one, not so much. So right in here, you're going to have to go back in, rescan, retract, all that sort of stuff. So one thing about the scanner is it's not magic. You still have to do everything the way you would normally do it. So right here, you still put cord, you still retract, because if the light rays that are getting to that tooth can't get to the scanner, can't get to your margin, they're not going to be able to read it. So this is good. That's bad. Uh, another thing, you can check your clearance. You can zoom in. You can measure. Make sure there's clearance for your restorative material, 
or whatever you're using. And then again, check all your margins. Are they there? Are they good? Could you make them better? So this is the software side. I have the cart, so it's a touch screen that no mouse. You just kind of click wherever you want. And this is the setup for a typical crown. So just like a lab prescription, click the tooth. So we're going to do a 2-7. Um, you pick the material. So really little down here, but it says zirconia, one piece, crown. Next screen you go is this one. So it's very user friendly. Um, the scanning portion, I actually don't do a lot of it. Two of my assistants scan everything before I get there, and I just scan the prep tooth. So you click kind of upper or lower, or if you're doing the bite. So this is the size of the wand that we use. It's accessible to everywhere, but the distal of an eight. That one's a tough one to get. So this is a scan on that patient. She said we could use it, and it's all real time. So here's a scan of the quadrant we're working on. So sort of like that. It's real time in this. You can go faster, slower. You can set the, seat, the speed settings for uh, insane mode, which is a little fast. Um, but a quadrant scan is done in about 20 seconds. And then once you've got your scan, how you like it, you can actually go in and start editing it. So pick the tooth that you're working on, 2-7. And I like to make the model a little nicer. So you trim off some tissue. And then you can line everything up just like that. Going through it all. Okay, so like I was saying, this is about where I would see the scan. Once the assistants have scanned both arches, I'll trim out the tooth that we're working on. So we've crown prepped that tooth. And then all you need to do is go right back in and scan that one spot again. And this shows just how fast it is. So boom, boom, boom. And it's scanning the prepared tooth. And that's pretty much it. So if you're working it right, the amount of time that you're taking impressions or scanning is about 15 seconds. Um, the work can be done before you're even in the room or it can be done while locals working. You're saving all that time. So these are real screen caps of the bulk of what I do for implants. Um, we merge the intraoral scans with a CT scan and you can plan everything in plant just from the same software. So this case I actually did today. Um, she got both implants in and it took about six minutes to do both. So based on the guide down here, you plan where your teeth want to go and can the implants go there? And you use the software and right here, this is the proposed spot of that implant. And here and here, everything looks good. So you design this little guide from the same software and it just gets 3D printed and you go boom, boom. And no cutting, no anything. The patient was amazed that it took six minutes for two implants. So this is more, this took some training to get into. It's a little more advanced when you have to merge with CT, but once you're there, it's very, very fast. So this one, I didn't really even realize how much time and money it saves for the past three years until I calculated it for this slide. So in an average month, and I took an average month of just what we do, since we're not doing impressions, we're not taking trays, we're not um, wasting full arch impressions for Invisalign, and we're not using um, implant analogs in-house, this is how much it saves us per month. So if you're doing, you know, 25 crowns or less <clears throat> at about $20 an impression, it's $500 a month. If you're doing implant crowns, it's 45 per. So here it's about 450 a month. And I was a little lenient on the Invisalign because full arch PVS impressions take a lot of money. 
and you're not, you know, they're picky. You're probably taking more than one per arch. I know at least here we do. So saving on that is about a hundred bucks a month. The big one is the time right here. So where I would normally have to take impressions and, you know, the opposing, the bite, all that sort of stuff, I'd say it saves about 20 minutes per prep appointment, per Invisalign appointment, all that sort of stuff. So over a month, it's about 800 minutes, which is 13.5 hours at about 500 an hour is a lot of money. So in a month, it's about $8,000 that you're saving in time, you know, hours, staff wages, that sort of stuff. So that's, you know, our office, we're pretty busy, but even if it was less than that, it pays for itself in a few months. So I think that's pretty worth it. Oh, so that's it for my part. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Anderson. He certainly does keep us active with a lot of the uh, crown and bridge and implant work that he's sending. We do help him with printing and manufacturing his surgical guides based on the implant systems that he's using based on the, the plan and the layout that he has done. So again, I'm John Green, I work uh, with Shaw Lab Group. Uh, I'm one of the three reps for the Ontario region. Uh, most of you will know myself, Mike DePellegrin or Shauna, as uh, we're very visible in the Ontario region servicing uh, all of the dentists for all of our four laboratories across the, the province. Video. Oh, video. Sorry, I forgot to start the video and the lighting in here is a bit bizarre. <laughs> so um, again, um, we're, we're certainly able to help you from a, a province-wide standpoint. We at Shab Laboratory have been in business for 75 years as a full service dental laboratory, um, doing everything from crown and bridge, uh, ortho work and our own version of Invisalign Perfect Smile. So we have in-house specialists working with all that as well. And four laboratories across the Ontario area, uh, Toronto, Kingston, London, and Ottawa. So certainly able to service you and your local needs as well. Um, next screen. Um, as a full digital laboratory, we certainly have many um, people sending us different files and different iOS scans. Um, we have all the information available for you to be able to uh, upload your files directly to us at the Shaw Lab Group website, send a case. So depending on the service you have and the uh, intraoral scanner that you're using, you would have different ways of uploading those files for us. And as Dr. Anderson touched on earlier, we certainly like reviewing the cases real time, uh, even sometimes with the patient still in the chair. We have a large um, capacity of designers in our warehouse in-house so we can uh, certainly work with you for designing anything from crown and bridge implants and things of that nature as well with all of our digital um, aspects. We have webinars and things on uh, YouTube and feel free to go on to our channel and review some of those as well. We have many new milling systems. So we mill zirconia in-house and um, have many capabilities of doing that for you. Many different types of uh, 3D printers, depending on which location you're working with, the Stratus, the Carbon, and new to some locations, the Form Labs and the Asiga system as well with Stroman and other implants also. So we can certainly take care of all of your digital aspects here at Shaw. We are printing even some of our night guards as well and 3D dentures. So digital aspects is very advanced with Shaw. Again, Toronto area, Kingston area, London area, and Ottawa. So feel free if you have you know, further questions, you can certainly reach out to them. We also have a Q&A portion that has been a little open and only a few people have been asking some questions. Uh, I will read the questions and let the appropriate person answer those. So as it stands, we have uh, a question here. So are you able to do a snap on smile versus a wax up with the smile design? Um, I think Dr. Anderson use uh, that system as well, or Jamie, um, we can accept and work with uh, all systems for a wax up and in the finished products from a design standpoint on the wax up. What are your thoughts on that, Jamie? Yeah, no, from a, yeah, depending on, on what the, the product that's required, but the, the smile design feature there is basically embedded to, to create that discussion with the, the patient. And you can actually send that in a format. 
the lab and they can choose again you guys can choose how, how you want to create that uh that uh prosthetic um the new innovation behind it is is one that can actually be added to the design software so you can take that actual creation you did chair side and fit it into the three shape design software as opposed to it just being a uh, i guess a guide you can actually bring it into your design software and, and produce a couple of different options so so it is kind of you know innovative that way and um we're getting a lot of good feedback from that uh that particular application for the patient we have another question here um from julie can a doctor contact the lab to see if a scan is approved before they cement the temporary crown um yes with some of the uh, implant, uh, sorry, with some of the iOS scanning systems, there can be chair side communication with the lab. So we could certainly look at it, do some measurements as well with the patient in the chair so that if any prep adjustments need to be done, that can certainly be done. So yes, um, Dr. Anderson, have you had any experience with any of that sort of thing? Um, yeah, actually recently. So as soon as the scan goes through, um, Amanda, who I talked to a lot, um, accepts the case and I said, is there enough room for this material or for the wax up we wanted? And within 10 minutes, she, yes or no. So it's pretty immediate. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the, uh, inner oral scanners are faster than others with communicating with the lab. And certainly this one works extremely well for us. Um, we have another, another question from, uh, Ali. Oh, they're moving on me. Is perfect smile, clear aligners, same as Invisalign and what are the differences? Um, yes, it's a very similar system to Invisalign. Uh, however, everything is made and manufactured here in Canada. Um, Canadian production certainly allows you much better communication with the people helping you uh, on the case. Sergio is our in-house so, uh, ortho specialist and can certainly take care of you from that standpoint. Um, also being Canadian, you have Canadian prices and Canadian shipping, so things can be a lot quicker and much more reliable uh, from that standpoint. And absolutely, we can work with the, the same intraoral scannings for these processes also. I know Dr. Anderson uses Invisalign, but Perfect Smile is a wonderful Canadian manufactured solution to help with the same idea. We have another question here from Jennifer. Does sending a scan speed up the process of getting back the finished product? Um, so at the lab, I can certainly answer that question. Um, we, we like to take care in producing everything uh, in-house to top quality. So the, the process of which it is done in the lab does not speed up. We still make models. We still um, you know, check the bite and the clearances before it goes back to the uh, clinics. So from an in-lab standpoint, no. But yes, the, the um, impression or the prescription can get to us uh, faster because it is real time with the uh, sending of the information could so it could save in mm -hmm. ship times one way. Um, mm -hmm. I know Dr. Anderson uh, looks to keep the chair quite active and flowing and yeah. it's very reliable uh, both ways. Is it faster? Only more reliable as opposed to faster. I think you save the day of prep basically is what you save because it's it's there immediately and you know if you need anything more that day. Right. Versus let's wait to pour up the model, da, da, da. You know, it, it saves the, the first step day. Step yeah. process. Yeah. <clears throat> um, questions seem to be coming in pretty quick now, so this is good. Um, which scanners allow the immediate chair site assistance with the lab, which also allow the full edentulous scanning? Um, I think that's a question that can best potentially be answered from Jamie. Um, you know, we, we certainly have a couple that we can rely on. And Jamie, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so in, in the portfolio we carry, um, obviously the TRIOS through the uh, three-shape communicate gets to the lab immediately. Um, a lot of the labs are designing in, in the three-shape software. I think Shaw has obviously a, a lot of that, but it, it's, uh, it's a direct connection, so you get that quickly. Um, same with the Densply Serona, the prime scan I showed, uh, that actually post-processes the scan. And that's effectively what you're doing, is you're post-processing the scan to its final state to get to the lab. There's some others, uh, again, Prime Scan, the Trios, and I believe the new Plamec Emerald S as well. Um, you can get there um, within a matter of minutes because it processes in the engine that you're scanning. Some have to go over and, and get uh, stitched uh, manually and, and, and you lose some time there. So you could lose 24 hours or depending, right? Or, or 
days. You'd know better, John, than I would. But it takes a little bit to get to the lab. So you want to look at that immediate communication. I know those three will. Um, so that, that's nice. And, and they're open platform to send, uh, which is great. Um, but yeah, you, with those three, the TRIOS, the, uh, the Prime Scan, and the, and the Emerald, you will be get to the lab um, directly uh, without being processed elsewhere and, and take up more time. Uh, the indentulous question is, is a great question. It, it's a newer scanning workflow. Um, we've seen recently with uh, the TRIOS um, and with the Prime Scan. So those two I can, I can talk from firsthand experience. Um, so just ask the question to the other manufacturers perhaps, but I can tell you that those I've seen uh, the indentulous scans with, uh, which is pretty impressive to be honest, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the next question here is for Dr. Anderson, and it's uh, a little connected with the COVID-19 situation that's going on currently. Uh, do you or your patients feel using the iOS is working with the digital lab is a better idea? And if so, why? Yeah, so for, for two ways. Um, <clears throat> we're not sending things to the lab, right? It's email. So even if a patient, you know, didn't know they were had COVID or and then we're working on them, nothing is being transmitted beyond the, the office into the lab or um, even couriers who come up and pick up the cases. It's not three points of contact before it gets to the lab and back to us. It's one. So, I mean, patients haven't directly commented on that, but I can see that it would reduce person to person contact on three different points. So, yeah. Um, sure. Good, very good. The next question is from Mike and asking if there are costs involved. Oh my goodness, it's moving. Are there costs involved with sending a digital scan to the lab? So I know that at Shaw Laboratory, we offer a discount for people that are sending us um, files electronically <laughs> and digital scanning because we are saving a one-way courier. Um, and that is on each case as opposed to um, something that's done by other people and things of that nature. We build our own models in-house and 3D print them. So it's certainly a cost saving to you on your lab fee. Um, Dr. Anderson, do you feel that there's also a saving at your level other than the fact you're not buying some of the materials you need? Cost involved. Um, yeah, you save on, on every aspect. Even the, the Shaw discount for a digital case gets passed on to the patient. So it's cheaper than a traditional crown. And um, we have someone asking, what is a good scanner for a denturist? So I think, Jamie, that's your um, wheelhouse and best answer. Yeah, yeah and a great question. Uh, you know, a little tricky though, even when you say good, I mean, it all depends on what you want from it and what your situation is. Maybe you travel from, from uh, you know, maybe different office to office or, or you prefer a, a certain style of scanner head, feels more comfortable in your hand. And that's really where we come in, in, in handy here at Henry Shine. I would say those three top scanners that I showed you, uh, we like to actually go to the office or you come here and you try them and you let us know what you think and, and what you're doing so we can assess that properly. Like I said, there's not really a, hey, you go with this one. It's more of a, what are you using it for? What do you think of this one? Have the software, how, how does it feel in your hand? What do you think of this software versus the other? So you make those decisions as you, as you see them and that's what we're here for. And we have those, uh, those scanners readily available to, to try out because I think that's important you know, now to, uh, to get the information but also to see um, compare them and, and then see what's really going to be important to you, the features, the, you know, the different hardware and some of the applications. So I know it's a long way of, of, of answering the question, but I can't really tell you there's, there's just one. The scanner is a great option for denturists. Let's open the dialogue and, and, and try them out and see what you think. Yeah. And we have another question here um, asking about the huge difference in pricing for some of the iOS scanners. And they've heard that some of them vary from 25,000 to 70,000. And I guess, Jamie, that's uh, something yeah. directed for you as well. Yeah, and I think it kind of flows nicely from that, that last kind of question, right? I mean, what, what the difference is, um, you know, there, yeah, there is, there is a variance in, in cost. Um, so what is the difference in the scanners to, to make up that variance? Um, the applications you can do with it, the speed, um, the accuracy, uh, the size, some have disposable versus autoclavable tips. Um, you know, some have other software embedded. Um, again, some are directly connected to the lab softwares. Um, some are on a cart, some are, are on a laptop. So there's a lot of variants that can, that can change that price. Um, you know, some are, are new entries that don't really have a, a track record of, 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 or a history right behind them. 
So they're, they're entry level pricing. Uh, so you kind of take your, your chances there. Um, so you, you look at, you know, what's going to be feasible and obviously budget's important and that's where we kind of work with you. And, and at Henry Schein, we've got, um, you know, um, finance options and uh, deferred payments, especially now. So we've got different options to help uh, with that financial piece around it. Um, but the ones we carry, yeah, you will see a variance between, you know, your, like you say, your, your 30K to, to 60K in that range. And it's just going to, you know, be basically what would you like and we can help build that for you. And, and certainly from a lab standpoint, we know um, that all the scanners that are on the market now, whether you're buying all the fancy software or things of that nature, if you're taking um, good preps and doing a good prep and take a good scan, they all work extremely well in the STL files we can certainly work with. Obviously, when we're crossing over and doing different things with implants and things of that nature, um, some of the systems work better than others, but uh, a lot of them take excellent uh, video and images for us to work with. The next question here is from a Mitchell. Uh, what is the workflow in the lab after sending a digital impression for a denture? So I'll answer that as the lab representation. Um, there's certainly many different ways now for dentures to be done. Um, we are 3D printing some dentures. So we can take that SDL file and put it into some three shape software that we're using for designing and printing digital dentures. Um, in the more traditional aspects, um, we're certainly making a model, printing it and going through the workflow in that respect. So if you're advanced digitally, we can certainly be sending you back 3D images and uh, 3D printed try-ins and things of that nature. But if it's more of a traditional workflow, we certainly work in that aspect as well with a digital impression and STL file that gets sent in to us. Um, the next question here is, can partial dentures be done with digital? And the simple answer is yes. Uh, question for Dr. Anderson, if, if you're okay to answer, do you have the TRIOS uh, 3 basic, TRIOS 3, or the TRIOS 4, and why? So I think I have the TRIOS 3. Uh, it's not the basic one, for sure. Um, the reason probably being that we wanted to expand what we could use it for. So in the first year, six months maybe, it was basically just crown and bridge. Uh, and then we incorporated Invisalign, and then now I do... Uh, full implant studio, implant planning, and 3D guide designing. So that's a little bit beyond the, the basic software, and we wanted to be able to keep up with what was going to be available. And um, it works really, really well. So I, like from a scan to final implant design in right here, I can do it in about 20 minutes. So it's excellent. excellent. And that does appear to be the last question. I uh, want to basically reach out to you two and see if you have uh, any last closing comments. Um, so I'll start with you, Jamie, and then uh, end with Dr. Anderson. Yeah, well, I just, again, just want to thank, uh, thank those that attended. And uh, again, just wanted to reiterate, um, you know, we are here as consultants to, to help answer those questions. Uh, that, you know, there's probably more there that, that would like to, some further questions. Give us a call. We'll set up meetings, whether it's through Zoom or or at an office, um, we're happy to do that and help you walk through the digital uh, journey, so to speak, you know, from your start all the way to um, you know, partners at the lab. So uh, reach out to us, we're, we're happy to do so. Um, and yeah, we can help, we can help you with that, uh, that solution. So thanks again, uh, Dr. Anderson especially, and, and John especially for, for you know, putting this on and just uh, sharing the knowledge. So there's a question that popped up right now. Um, Oh, oh Jerry, uh, are two oh, screens done for an implant, scan an implant and emergency profiles and the soft uh, tissue with the scan bot? Oh, yes. Um, it's optional though. So you can treat an implant just like a crown and bridge. So you could do your arch, the opposing and the bite. And then there's also a tab for capturing emergence profile um, where you would include one of these guys. I have a scan body um, and you can capture the tissue anytime you want. So you could capture the tissue while the healing abutment's on, as soon as you take it off before the scan body or after you put the scan body on. So it's pretty easy to um, capture what you've shaped right as soon as you want it. And uh, you can alter it too. So if you don't like how the tissue is draped, you can trim it out and just rescan that one spot. So it works pretty well for any way you want to do it. Excellent.
Yeah. That's, a, that's a good point. Maybe if we, we could just touch on that one because I know a lot of questions come from there. So the scan body, obviously, if you, if you want to you explain the scan body and John, how it relates to the lab and how you do your design maybe, right? Yeah, so I got a full drawer of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, it's one scan body per implant type or size. So this one is an Austin regular neck. Um, they all have their own little shape and size and connections right in there. And they're reusable. So instead of one per patient and then send it to the lab, you connect that, scan it, disconnect, and sterilize. Um, and then you buy it once. So it kind of works from then on. And uh, just got to make sure you have one for every brand that you're going to use. Yeah. Okay, excellent. We do have another question. It seems that uh, people have questions when we we're closing down, but it's all good. We're here to, to answer the questions you may have. So again, for Dr. Anderson, are you scanning all new patients as a part of your standard of care? or just based on restorative required? Uh, so it depends. If they have any concerns or questions, or if I have questions or concerns that they don't grasp, then I'll scan the full arch and show them. You know, on the screen, it's better. They can see it. They can pinpoint it, or they can pinpoint it if I don't quite understand their concerns. Um, but not, I wouldn't say every single person that comes through the door we scan. I know sometimes for ortho or Invisalign, they kind of push that saying, show everybody how their teeth don't line up. But sometimes for new patients, it can be a little overwhelming to be, you know, so much tech coming at them, they stop paying attention. So it's gotta be kind of case by case. Yeah. Excellent. So that seems to be a wrap up of the questions for now. So again, I want to thank everybody for being online. I want to thank Henry Shine for certainly uh, putting together this evening together with us. And of course, Dr. Anderson and Capital Dentistry for their wonderful, amazing work that they do as the partnership that we have and making lots of their patients happy all day, every day. So keep smiling and, and enjoy your evening and your weekend. Stay safe. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.